So thank you for, for having me and for this opportunity to do a, a presentation of the latest and greatest that we have, uh, that we have developed coming from Nell. So uh, just one slide about Nell and then I'll go into H2 stations. So Nell is a gathering of, uh, of these three companies that have worked with hydrogen electrolyzers as well as hydrogen stations uh, for quite some time. So I think we have been at this fair uh, more than most of you. I believe most of you are also aware of us, so we will uh, go quite quickly through it. And this one sometimes works, I hear. If I do like that, like that, it works better. Um, so within Nell, we have these three divisions, being our electrolyzer division, our fueling division, and solutions division. And what I'll be talking about today is uh, the solution division, and that's also what we are, uh, what we are doing within Nell to be able to create these uh, large-scale, as we call them, sustainable business cases. So all of us here at this fair have been here for many years. Now it's about time that we make the business commercial. And we believe that putting our forces together, using our electrolyzers and our hydrogen stations, we can get awfully close to that. However, this sometimes works. Next. Thank you. We are to move our industry from uh, demonstration projects to commercialization projects. In the demonstration market, where a lot of us are still in, we want to go and get funding, test vehicles, we want to uh, test hydrogen fueling. When we go to the commercializations, we need to increase the volume of vehicles, we need to uh, replace a complete fleet of ICE or batteries with, uh, with fuel cells, and eventually uh, we need to make standard fuel contracts so that seen from the customer's point of view, hydrogen will be just another fuel. There is a valley of death in the middle. We have talked about that as an industry before. We need to think smart and think big. That is where we can actually make, make it work. Because hydrogen is quite expensive if we, do that in a, if we do it in small scale. If we do it in large scale, it becomes quite interesting. What this chart shows is basically the, uh, the growth that has been within solar, within wind, and also the growth in, uh, in megawatts that have been within fuel cells. We will experience something similar going for uh, electrolyzers and for hydrogen stations. And this is the cost reduction curve, which is basically the mirror of the, of the PV curve here, where it's just has gotten cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. In order to get there, we need to continue to work with, uh, with our technology, we need to continue to scale up. And that is what we have been, been doing in Nell for quite some time. Um, you will be able to, uh, to see uh, in the next slide a video of, uh, of our factory in, the, in Denmark where we do hiding stations. If I can push the button, there it is. gaseous hydrogen flowing into the vehicle. Fueling is complete. So um, in this factory, we can produce our hydrogen stations with a, with a lot of different uh, variations and features. 
So the idea within LLR that we have completely realized that not everyone wants just one unique product. They want to have a product that fits for their uh, needs and requirements. And those needs and requirements are quite different uh, if it's Europe, if it's California, if it's Korea, the markets where we're currently active. So we have basically developed uh, a family now of products where it's possible to, uh, to have the products running side by side on the line if it's a bus product, if it's a truck product, if it's a car product for Europe, US or Korea. That will eventually make it possible for us to continue to go down this, uh, this cost reduction curve, which is what we all need in order to make the, the business work. What we're introducing in our latest generation of H2 station is capacity up to 120 kilograms per hour. And that is what you need on one dispenser in order to, uh, to hit intensively used uh, bus fleets in Europe. We, will, uh, we have fueling protocols for, for cars, that's the J2601, that's uh, three to five minutes for cars, and we are fueling down to five minutes uh, on buses, that's 20 kilograms. Our stations can be configured in quite a lot of different ways, depending on your source of hydrogen. We do on-site electrolyzers, we also do centralized electrolyzers, help our customers with the distribution of the gas, and then we uh, use the hydrogen trailers as the main storage for our stations. We have them already approved, so they are CE listed. Uh, CE Mark, you are listed, and we have KGS approvals uh, of our products. Um, this is the, the duplex version. It looks just like the, the standard version where we have 65 kilograms a day. Now this one has 120 kilograms, where you can basically do infinitive back-to-back -back on your station. Of course, that depends on your storage setup and configuration. We, with the station, we can configure that in a number of different uh, storages, as mentioned before. The daily capacity of such a unit is all the way up to 2,500 uh, kilograms per day. That will typically require uh, full redundancy, which is also why uh, the product is prepared in a, in a twin setup, where we can basically put two stations or more stations next to each other. I will show that uh, in a second as well. When I do like that, just take the new slide. So within Nell, we have worked for quite some years on, uh, on perfecting the technology inside our hydrogen station. So the station are extremely compact. It's 2.2 times 3.3 meters. Uh, we don't have any storage inside the station. Storage are outside the station, meaning that we have no more than one kilogram of hydrogen inside the station. Uh, with the hydrogen compression technology we launched last year, it makes it possible to do uh, hybrid fills, so where the compressor can operate with a, with a variable speed. We have an extremely high reliability. We want it to be better, but still we think it's, uh, it's uh, among the best in the world. Um, then we have our own developed uh, CO2 cooling system that gives us the necessary uh, cooling capacity uh, to really hit these, uh, these markets for both heavy duty and light duty. So, a specific example of what can we do if we think big and do this together. Let's talk buses. So hydrogen buses have been around for quite some time. Hydrogen buses are basically competing with battery electric buses. No more will we be competing with diesel, CND, biogas, whatever, because they still have emissions, and the cities are now completely going for zero emission tenders. As an example, in Denmark, we have a lot of wind power. That's around about 50% of the power produced in 2018 that came out of wind power. However, only 31% of the power consumed in Denmark came out of wind power. So we cannot use it whenever it's produced. We're selling it to our good neighbors. That's an issue that more and more will see. The same containment issues you see in, in north of Germany as well, in Schleswig-Holstein. So that means if you have a better electric bus and you charge that, you will get an average of 31% uh, of, of clean energy. The remaining will still come from coal uh, or burning all the kinds of fossil fuel. With hydrogen, we can produce uh, we produce hydrogen when we have the renewable, store it, distribute it, and we uh, thereby can get close to the 100% uh, renewable wind. And that is what we. That is one of the major stories that we're talking about in uh, in Denmark. So uh, the fuel cell buses are basically ready. What we are now trying to do is to create a big uh, a big initiative, where we will continue to see the the price of the fuel cell buses uh, to go down. This is uh, the level where the buses have to be in order to be competitive with, uh, with battery electric buses. 
that's a challenge and uh, it's not easy. We, uh, we can make the fuel competitive, meaning that we can hit the fossil parity, and we believe that we together with partners can get the buses uh, to round about this level. This all works at scale. And this is also at the point when we have um, going from demonstration to commercialization. In commercialization, we'll also experience a lot of other uh, issues like customer contracts, how really to make the, the business work and fly. So it's not, going to be, it's not going to be easy, but it's a necessary step we have to do as an industry. And we believe that, uh, that jointly we can do it together. The hydrogen can be produced really, really competitive at large scale. This is a presentation that we have shown quite a few times from Null, where basically here you can see the uh, example calculations. With, if you have a Null electrolyzer, operate uh, with, uh, with the capex prices you have here, uh, so 2020. If you have a large scale, you are above, uh, below 500 euro per kilowatt for the electrolyzer itself. Solar and wind, for that matter, is continuing to go down, which is going to give you resulting PPAs in the most attractive places in the world uh, below these uh, 4 euro per kilowatt hour, or 4 euro cents per kilowatt hour. When you combine that and have your electrolyzer operating for more than 20 years, these are your competitive hydrogen prices coming out. And this level, will be good enough to compete with fossil fuels when there are still taxes on gasoline and diesel. When we hit these levels, we'll be able to compete with fossil fuels without taxes. So this is the journey we need to be at, us as an industry, to make this happen. When we then put that into a supply chain, or a value chain of hydrogen, if we have the electricity at 40 euro per megawatt hour, or the 4 cents, centralized large-scale electrolyzers, 10 megawatts or bigger, high capacity distribution and efficient high, uh, dispensers with redundancy, you can get the high availability and you can get the higher than price awfully close to the five euros per kilogram. A lot of you here will say and have said, whoa, that's a challenge, it's difficult. Um, it is, it's not easy, but that is what we need to hit in order to hit the fossil parity. Fossil parity today is between five and six euros per kilogram. Then the cost to drive a kilometer in a higher than bus is the same to drive in a diesel hybrid. We have developed our bus station concept for H2Bus Europe, where basically we have the stations in different configurations. This is the layout of the small station with a, with a trailer bay, and you have uh, one or two stations uh, in order to, if you want to have the redundancy. And then you can have one or two dispensers connected to giving you the, the five minute fill. If you scale it up, 60 buses, footprint about 200 square meters. And finally, if you scale it up, all the way 120 buses. Uh, 240 square meters or roundabout. This is good enough to install at a bus depot, even at the high intensive utilized bus depots. So it works. This is a matter of, uh, of doing the complete value chain in one big move. Yes. So uh, we have three examples. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, that could be examples of higher than prices. We are just showing examples. This is not an offer. But these are examples of how your calculation could look like. Naturally, this depends on, uh, on the specific location, the geography, the installation. But this clearly shows that the more buses, the more consumption you have, the easier it is to get to a commercial level. Yes. So um, basically, we're asking who is ready to move and to help us to make the fuel cell buses uh, commercial. The objective is 1,000 buses in the on the roads in Europe in 2023. The first project, 600 of those buses, we managed to get funded by connecting European facility. That's for UK, Denmark, and Latvia. It's three, these three markets. And I think this is the last slide. If you are an operator of buses or a partner in these regions, let us know. If you are a stakeholder or someone ready to make the step change in other European markets, to, uh, to make the bus business fly, we're here. Thank you. Last one. Thank you very much, Jacob Boxgard. Are there any questions from the audience? OK. Do you have any plans for refueling uh, trucks and uh, also uh, trains as well? Or are you focusing on, uh, on buses and cars right now? 
I could almost not hear it, but you said something about uh, buses and tra uh, no, tra trains and trucks? Yeah, the yeah. trains and trucks. So uh, I think most of you are familiar with us having a cooperation with uh, Nicola, uh, which we're very pleased of, and Nicola is uh, very ambitious, and we are ambitious together with Nicola. Uh, so uh, with the Nicola world coming up in uh, just two weeks now, there will be some, uh, uh, hopefully, some good stories. Nicola will show what's going on in the hydrogen trucking market. Uh, we have uh, we have products on the development that would fit the requirements for this uh, high capacity uh, fast fill. Equally for for trains, we have products ready uh, that can do train fills. Seen from our point of view, a train is just a very big bus. Any other questions? Okay, so maybe you can tell me, uh, Nail Hydrogen Fueling, what's the difference or what is the advantage? Why should everybody work with you and not with the competitors? Um, so within Nell, we have uh, a lot of experience. We have been building, uh, I think it's now 60 hydrogen stations uh, around the world. We have uh, our in-house technology, which basically makes it possible for us to continue to, imp to improve it and make it better and better. We believe we are ahead of the, the curve, both technology-wise and below the curve uh, cost-wise. Great. So if you want to discuss further business, um, please go to the booth B60. It's right if you walk all the way straight to this direction. Thank you very much again, Jacob. Thank you.